Hi, greetings, fellow Argos. Um, this is going to be a short video to kind of get you set up and moving in R. If you haven't got there yet, we're still going to get everybody caught up. That's the goal by the end of this week or, or you know, at least Monday or Tuesday so we can move on with the next methods. Um, hopefully you're spending, if you were just really lost in R, hopefully you're spending your extra time working on uh, your papers so you can kind of catch up. So since I'm a day late getting, or really by the time they get it uploaded, it'll be two days late getting, you know, little videos for each week's here um, and, and your regression stuff up. Um, I'm going to try to create a few videos. This one is going to get us started. So if you've had trouble downloading, I was available, I was um, able to find a cloud link where you can use a browser base, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, or if you download it, we're going to I'm going to show you how to install packages, how to get moving. Um, um, and just kind of the basics of using R. So it, it's a lot of similarities between any other spreadsheet program that you use or numerical program, but uh, it's a lot more advanced and it has a lot more features and a lot more to learn, basically. But once you get used to it, it's actually quicker than Excel for a lot of things. Um, it also has some drawbacks, especially like formatting. Yes, I know I still don't have a good you know, answer for you for how to format within a table and change the numbers rounded off and things, but uh, we'll see um, as we move forward. So right now, um, I'm going to be conducting this using that link that I sent if you have the standalone version, then just open it up and we'll see. Uh, so, and then we're going to pull up uh, that sheet with the R language and I'll show you, you know, what to use and what not to. And we'll install those packages. Then later, I will walk through both the chapter exercises or all the chapter exercises. Um, for all the chapters, the examples and how they do it and how they get their answers. Then later on tonight, I will try to post quick videos of at least at least a good many. And you do have the hints that you can use. It'll show you exactly how to put stuff in. But I will try to walk you through, you know, just an open video that's a little easier to see for several of those problems. So you can just log in and do, you know, your homework for the first two weeks within a couple of hours and move on. Because, um, like I said, we're not covering anything theoretically new here y'all are just learning to use the program so even if i have to hold your hand as you got through the first couple of weeks that's fine but once we get to next week when we're learning new stuff new statistics and a, i don't want y'all learning a program at the same time so let's get started i'm gonna go ahead and share and uh to be honest, like I said, I don't have my video and my OBS set up you know, for professional video, so I'm just going to zoom myself and, and get it to you, um, probably mediated through YouTube. So let's switch and move and um, posit cloud. So posit cloud, come down here. You can always download it, but you'd have to have a version of R. Some of y'all have had problems getting it downloaded, getting it working. To be honest with you, with the different versions, I've had some problems too. So uh, Posit Cloud is going to give you an option. Get started or already a user. So get started. You go and you got to log in. You just log in for the $0 one. This is what you get. Since I already logged in and have something, I'm just going to log in here, and it's the computer's not recognizing my face because I'm wearing my glasses. And now I'm in. So it's going to bring up different projects, and I'm just keeping the same one. So from here, let's just kind of you got your workspace or you can open a new space and there's a guide that kind of, you know, shows you the basics if you need to use it. 
So that kind of takes you to the Shiny app. I was trying to find one of those. You come down here to plans and pricing. Let's talk about this right off the bat in case you wish to use that uh, this link. Understand it is not free. But if you look, you can sign up for student after you, you get like a gigabyte and, and like an hour of actual processing time. Uh, you can have three concurrent projects. We're not worried about data connections because you're going to upload whatever you have, you know, basically from, you know, whatever you got there. So uh, each problem, you click on it, you're going to just upload that basically right out of your own, um, probably your download folder or wherever you have it set to store when when your um, McGraw Hill files pop up. So if you run out, if you run out, then for five dollars a month, it's probably going to be more than you need to finish this course because you know we've only got like a month left to use an R. Um, the last week, I think we only have. I'll just have to figure out what we're going to do as far as an exam. We may need it, but probably not. Um, the week, the second to last week, we're doing forecasts, and I'm probably going to do that. 100% in just basic good old Excel. So, you know, from week two to week six, we can probably stretch that one month if you need $5. If you use all of this, a little more, 75 hours instead of uh, 25 hours of compute time over here. Um, that one hour that I showed you, that's for any one calculation, I think. So if you like hooked it up to a, a supercomputer thinking you're going to get, you know, nah, it'll, it'll time you out. But for what we're going to do, it's going to take like one minute to do. So, yeah, you got plenty. So this should be more than enough time. If it's not, then you can go to this basic and get $25 a month and sign up. And, you know, especially if you do these in succession, there's really no reason you should be putting 200 hours of R into this course. So I would think. The free one's going to get you a good ways through. If it doesn't, you can pay $5. That's if you don't want to download it. If you want to download the versions, you use them for, for life, for, for free. It's open source. It's what it is. These are, if you want cloud-based versions, can easily be set up, uh, plugged into an API. You know, that's up to you. I just wanted you to know that you may run out of space and it costs you $5 or at the most, 30 um just so you know so we're going to and i'm going to page here just to kind of get some uh just so when we go in there uh well i'll, I'll get to this in a minute i just kind of want this is kind of what your thing's going to look like so there's it four panes are going to come up when you open it just so we're all on the same page as what you're looking like we got the source page the console your source is kind of your data frame when you call it up it's going to appear you can also enter script the entire script and just go down run 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 and kind of go back and forth your console that's where you're going to enter code as you go um environments Kind of your files and your things you already have installed or pulled up into your global environment or saves different things you've done or as you load things. We'll get to that when I log in here. Uh, your output, like if you plot a graph, any packages you have installed, things like that, your easy loaders within here. I'll show you files you have. Either, you know, you can, you can program are to write to a file and print PDFs. I've done that in other courses, you know, just so students will have something to turn in to show me they did it. But, you know, here I just, if we get the right answers, I'm, I'm going to be happy. 
Um, and if we don't, and they're like a thousandth off because we can't format, then I'll just have to adjust the scores manually rather than hold you need to. So don't, don't, we'll just kind of have to keep up with that as we go. Um, so let's go back to Posit Cloud. Like I said, I've already logged in. Once you log in, it's going to take you to this. So you can just, I keep, you know, like I said, one project since you only get three and make it un, you know, unnamed. Um, and I just delete and upload different files right within that one project. If you want to name it chapter one and, and have different ones, you'll have to pay enough to do that if you're using this cloud. Um, so when you open it, one thing about this version that is nice is you can go up here and switch between versions if something's messed up. You can even go down here to the version that he recommends that I do not recommend. Most of the stuff is not running in that older version, a lot of the packages. If you want to, that's fine, but all of your packages here, if you come down to your output, this is the packages you have loaded. I, you know, most of these, you won't see quite as many of these already loaded as, as I have. Um, even easier, but I'll show you how to load them. Uh, as soon as you open, it tells you what version you're running. Now, my standalone R would not load. Supposedly, when you upload, when you download the newest version of R, there's no magic way within the standalone R studio to just switch between versions. That's what's kind of neat about this one but um i had to delete all previous versions then then it asked me to select a you know a, a base version didn't do it automatically so to my knowledge that's kind of the only way to do it um and if you want to switch between versions especially the way mine was working i guess you had to delete the version you have then go install the version you want to use and then delete that and go back. This is neat because you can just go to whatever version you, you know. So let's pull up right off the bat this uh, R version information that we had. Some of y'all have already, you know, let me know that these websites no longer work. Just use that uh, Case Western one that I posted somewhere, you know, in chat board, and I think it's in course announcements, and, you know, download the newest version. So let's go ahead and knock this out. We'll be using um, 4.3.2 eye holes, I think is what it's called. Okay. Now, I think this is like cran.case.edu, if you want to download the standalone. If you have a computer in S mode, you'll probably have to take it out of S mode before you can download anything. You don't want to do that. This uh, Posit Cloud works really, really well so far. So all of these packages we're going to be using, I can't guarantee you they're going to work perfectly and, and give you the exact answer in the book. Like I said, if, if the newer versions have changed just a little bit of what we can and can't do, then guess what? We will. Um, deal with those you know little differences in the answer as we go there's also one package so first of all just so you can kind of see what i like to do is just go through here and uh all these red lines where i can actually see i'll just right click that and ignore where i can actually see what i'm supposed to type but it does have like Unlike Python, it does have like a, a auto suggestion down here in your uh, console section. When I installed my version of 4.3.2 here from scratch and got my R, my new version of R Studio to load it. It gave me an error that it was looking for quant, its quant package that it has to have. Yours may not do that. It may just be where I ended up downloading it because I couldn't get it to load. So I went back and instead of Case Western, I downloaded from um, Iowa State up there or, or uh, 
Peter's at when y'all had him for supply chain years ago. Um, so, and it, I still had to do, just delete the old version before it would work. So, these packages, those are like lines and lines and lines of code that perform, you know, the, 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 these calculations in the background and, and, you know, different calculations. So for each one of these, it's kind of like buying a different add on into SAS or, S, you know, SPSSS or, you know, the different steps up is, you know, how, how you, what you have to pay for those programs or, um, whatever, you know, software you want to use. So all of these do different things and they're different. So what do you do it? You install them. So they're here in your, um, program background. And don't just go, if, if you have this standalone version, you don't just want to install all, everything you can think of just to see, because it's, just calculating your, just using your data here. Um, you see this little button called RAM. So if I went and clicked on everything and had them all open, it would really drain the RAM on this processor and on your computer, especially if you had a standalone version. Now I just had to reboot my computer just in case you know, didn't already know. Doesn't matter if it's SAS, SPSS, or Rapid Mine or Python. Anytime you have these powerful programs running, it will eat your virtual memory up and you need to reboot and reboot off. And especially if you're like me and you may, I may have two or three of them all open at one time. I specifically bought a computer that has 32 gigs of RAM so that I could do that. Most of y'all can't afford, you know, 2,500 and 3,000 or even can. You just, it's not worth it to, to, to buy that. And that's fully understandable. Just know that when you're running these things, it will, if you start seeing weird things happening on a computer or within here, close everything out, reboot, get that virtual memory, you know, rolling again, and 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 it'll it'll go back. So you can see it. The base package here is already installed, but there was something called quant. It's not rolling on here, so. Mine, it did tell me I needed that. And I don't know if it was because of something I had ran in the past that was already loaded in here or not. I really don't, can't tell you. Um, and running this, just so you know, running this at the same time as I'm running my R Studio. The mine's showing just the console quant data. It told me, you know, I need this loading required package. So every time it's got to load that, uh, this one's probably already got it running in the background, but if not, I'll show you how, um, you can see, I don't have anything up in my source because I don't have anything open running standalone and this browser version at the same time that I'm trying to run a zoom here is going to really eat my virtual memory up. So I'm going to have to reboot, even with the powerful computer that I bought. So um, just know that when you're running these, especially these quantitative programs, it doesn't matter if it's SPSS or, R or Smart PLS or, or Amos or, or, or Python, they will eat up your, your RAM quickly. And you'll just have to reboot and, and, and start back from where you were. So in here, if you want programs, in this one, I already had some data loaded from yesterday, so it's already there. Um, I will show you, once you have stuff, this is my standalone, just, just so you can see once you have something, loaded or if you got something in there like this one of these regression problems that, that i was looking at or your chapter two data or whatever you can just click this and now you've got something in your source code if you want to upload uh well i don't have it you want to upload an entire script um 
four. We go down to my plugin. Oh, don't have it there. Okay. You say have that stored uh R code. like code for all these examples because you know i'll show you all what i do and kind of save some of these as go then it'll open up a new one and you kind of run stuff as you go if i can find that particular source code that i was using for this one i'll, I'll show you all how to do that um but once you get moving and learn how to do these things, it gets to be a whole lot quicker. Hopefully that loaded. Yeah, here's my, here's uh, this. Actually, I needed that chapter eight data for this one, but. I may or may not be able to find. It's, uh, you know, just absolutely, it is, that's my model results. Where's my, well, this is just me going through answering some of your questions, the things that kind of popped up there. Um, hmm. I'd have to find a particular data file that goes with this. It's something in chapter eight, I think. Yeah, I know it's, it is because I got moderation, but as you put that in, you can kind of go through. Maybe that's my. Yeah, that code's not going to work, but you can have different things open and it's easy to get, lose track of which data frame you're working at, working with at any given time. So right now I have, that's the one I have up there. I'm going to reference that from behind, but so let's go ahead and start loading. We need to load, install the programs, and then we can call them into play using the library. So this, uh, whatever it was, it's telling me I need on mine. Quantita. I'm going to go ahead and add that in case you need it. So. Ignore that spelling. So to install, there's two ways. You can go into install here, click packages and install. This is what's called your lazy loader. So down in your output, just click packages and it will tell you quickly whether you need to update some packages or if so, uh, things are, are available or if you want to install, it's got pretty much everything that's loaded within the open source framework already in here. So you can do this. Quantita and click install. And it's going to do the same thing. Now I look over here. As I scroll down to the queues, and it's there. So it only installs it to call it into play. Like I said, you don't want to call in a bunch of stuff if you don't, if you're not using it. Uh, also, in addition to that, something called Tidyverse. I always use Tidyverse because it's kind of a formatter. So, to call that up into play, you would type in library and then 
technically you should have like uh, quotes. Anything you type into these should be in in quotes. But if you just uh, type in a few words and then it will suggest. So you just click on that. It will go ahead and put whatever you need in there. Oh, to install packages, you have to put it in quotes. But when you're calling it up, you don't. Python works in similar, but it's, you know, there's there are some differences. So another way you can do that is just click this and it'll automatically do it for you. So let's go ahead and install tidyverse. Install, we'll do it the hard way. You can either type that out or you can double click here, install packages. Now in here, like I said, it should be in quotation marks, but if it's going to recognize the program because it's widely used. So if you just click that, you can see that it's got the quotation for you. Make this a little bit bigger for you. Then you click end and it's going to install all of that. Now you can just call that up or if you ever don't want to use them, you, you can just type a Q and um empty parentheses set and then it will restart R or it will shut down R and then you open it up and everything's kind of blank again. So, um, so we want, we just call in, like I said, to show you and then click tidyverse. And some of these have like your read Excel packages and stuff like that. So just telling me I've got a con conflicting package Apparently the filter package it doesn't like anymore. So if that messes us up, we'll just have to take it out. And if you want to uninstall it, you know, just click over here to the little button and remove package. Browse package, you know. Maybe this time change is what we needed installed uh, when when the uh, as date function wasn't working, I don't know. Sometimes you just have to look up. None of us are gonna be experts in R code at all. Um, you will be comfortable in users, but you still, you know, there's only a small percentage of people in the world that are, you know, that good, so. Uh, now we'll get into here. So like I said, you can either, you can do, you know, either type it in, install dot packages every one of these ada and uh ada bag right there and we'll just go down the list because you know the scripts in the book are going to be based off of this so you have to have those every week there's probably going to be a list of or or every specific problem through the example there's going to be a list you know call these up in the library. So we're not necessarily going to click on all of them until we need them, but A rules, association rules, that's a good one. So install. You know, click on packages there and ARU, it should give me A rules. And so we'll install that and then A rules visual. And you can do these kind of I think multiple things here. We can move this out of the way. Insta rules. I don't remember that one. I don't remember that one being there, did I? Playroom visual. Problem is. You make and install too many things at once and you have an error, you don't know which one the error is coming from. Now I was trying to install these and it kept telling me resetting R was giving me an error. So nothing was installing, nothing was loading. So that's why I had to delete 
all the old versions. So I'm just going to go through here. Every one of these. So how to load these, it's just, well, crap. this button right here, the little file button used to call stuff up for me, but it's got like old, here's that file. It's got like old, so it's not, it's giving me like this magic number error because load has been, that's, that's a thing of the past. So what I do, you can type everything in yourself but I like to use this import data set button from Excel. Then I'll go in and find this chapter six, chapter eight code. And this is just show you how to call something up. Now you can type all this and it's going to name it, whatever the file name is. And then here's the code that you would. So, um, And this is coming from the project cloud because I've already loaded it. Let's, uh, if you go to files here to load something, like you, you know, this hasn't been loaded into your cloud. Now, if you got the standalone, that's fine. You can just import data set. If you got it in your download folder, whatever you got it there. Um, but if you need to upload something from scratch, Go to this upload button here and pull it in. Choose file. And it's going to give you options. Um, I should have that particular somewhere. Here's so we can click on that. Click on the file you want. Now, if you're working homework and you click on the thing right out of uh, McGraw Hill, it's probably going to go into your downloads. Um, or wherever you, unless you have it specifically set to store it in a, in a folder, but whatever, you just, you can go straight there and it's going to load it into your cloud. Now to keep you from having too much data at a time, once you finish your homework, you know, you just delete all that chapter out. You can save your scripts into, into a file so you have them, then you go in. If you have to rework the homework to get some extra points, you got your script. You just uploaded it up here, you know, into your um, into your source and uh, you know box. You pull up the file it gives you from the next version of whatever problem you're doing, and you can just click run all the way down. Um. So, or I think the book feedback gives you scripts that you can automatically load and then run them through. I just kind of want you to get used to it. So these are actually the same. Oh, it gave me a different version, so you know it doesn't really matter. So now from this upload, once you have it in there, you should be able to come to your import data set and find that we're looking for version 11 here. There we go. Uh, that's the one, or whichever, it doesn't matter. Okay, now we got it. So your book tells you to import and name something. It tells you everyone to name it my data with a capital D. Now, I always just fat finger this and capitalize the A after the D and messes me up. So if you type this in, just click down here, you can see that's your code to do all that. Now, someone else and one of the sections announced that they like to uh, name theirs my data and a problem number. 
So they always, because if you call up the wrong data, even if you import it until you set it as my data in your console, it's going to be calling whatever. So naming everything the same gets confusing and it'll give you, um, it'll give you variable errors. So it'll be a data frame error because you, you're calling this code out to the wrong thing. So if you want to, I think this is, if you want to call this my data and then underscore chapter eight, you know, underscore six or whatever, it's just going to be extra things to talk about. Or maybe my data eight, six, maybe, I don't know. But there's no guarantee this is going to be your number six. It's just the the, the book's problem. But so um, now you got it and you just click import. Now I've got a console open. Okay. So all this is in. And I think for this particular problem, I needed to load a couple of things. Um, Let me grab my book. There's a couple of uh, packages, and it don't tell you per problem which package. So if you're not working through the examples to get a feel before you do the problems, it may not. So I know like chapter eight, chapter seven, we needed maybe LM test and sandwich, which I should have here maybe. If I go back to packages. So that's how you import into this, which is way better than that crap our own Argo app. So LM test, that's the one. I already have it on there. So if you don't, download it. And I think maybe sandwich. So uh, for this one, as you can see, when we're typing this code, library read Excel, calling that into play, that's kind of from your tidyverse. It's going to... That allows you to read Excel files and pull them right in. Um, one of the book doesn't show you all that, I don't know, but we named this my data 86. I did it through the thing, but if you were typing it out, if you're typing from a standalone, you're gonna to have to include like the C file, users, download, or whatever folder, and then you know all of that, and it'll give you errors. If you have folders nested within folders, nested within folders. You can't exceed the length that R can read on these files. If that happens, sometimes it's easier just to set your thing to download everything from Graw Hill into a standard zip file. That way you only have to type in D colon or E colon, whatever your file plugin is, colon the file name, and it'll pull it up. So just so you know, then uh, view. So you rename stuff, anything you're naming, you you name it something, you draw your little arrow there, and then you call out whatever function you want. That saves you from having to type everything out. So if you're doing like a me and if then else functions in Excel, you have to type them all within, 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 and nested, and it gets confusing. If you have an error, it's very hard to find. Here you just name one part then now you can nest within and once you got the second part you can name that level two or whatever you want that's how you know these programs work so we we called it up and then view puts it up into here and then we need library lm test um now we're going to name a model. We're going to do just a basic regression model with this, this, with this data from chapter eight. So we're going to call it model one. We're going to do two models. We're going to do one that just use these two variables. We're going to regress the Y variable onto these two X's. And then we're going to test an interaction in model two. Uh, so model one, Draw our little arrow. Now we're going to uh, type it in linear model. Now our quotes. And it'll tell you down here, it'll give you little hints of what you're supposed to have here. To me, some of them aren't that good. So your formula, make sure you know the formula. 
is always going to be your why or your outcome is about to the estimate x1 plus x2 you know so we're going to go ahead and type y is about here open this work x1 plus x2 now we got to tell it what we're looking for so my data our data tell it which data frame and you can type it in here and it'll tell you how to do it'll make sure you're getting all your spaces and everything exactly the way you want it so what with my capital D, D A 86. So it'll gives you what it has live here and gives you option to choose that. So you don't have to type it out. So now we do this, click enter. Over here, click that. It's going to show, you click the model. It's going to give you all the underlying things here. As soon as I click that over here, guess what happened? The view, model one. This doesn't really tell us a whole lot though. I mean, it tells us everything, but it's hard to read. So what we're gonna do is do a summary. Summary, model one. And here we go. So here's our, Here's basically our answers. It looks like so. I mean, and probably before I did any of that, I probably should have uh, just plotted my data eighty six. If you don't give it anything else to go on, just hit plot. Look over here in your plot. It's going to give you the bivariate plots, scatter plots for each of these. So y versus x one here. You can see that's pretty significant as it goes up. X2, as you can tell, is not significant, just kind of everywhere. Um, X1 against the others, you can kind of sell, you know, whether you got some extreme collinearity issues. And here's that kind of the same picture over here, you know. So that's just kind of how you plot before you start to see what you've got, you know, and let's go back to files or summary. Now we're going to look at an interaction. And again, I've tried to try the you know, options. Um, digit, digits equal, you know, let's say four to try to get this all looking the same, four, four, three, to, and that's got three. And maybe we just want it all in two. I don't know. I'm going to delete that, but I did. Um, that kind of resets the printout for these things. So summary. But to me, it hadn't changed anything within the thing. So model one. It still looks the same, so I'm just going to go back. Kind of, it's probably set to four or five or something. Nothing's worked as far as the formatting. So y'all are asking how do I change? Um, I asked the guy from StatQuest, and that guy is brilliant. If you've never watched uh, StatQuest videos on basic stats or even advanced stats, He's much more entertaining than I, and he, and he had no answer for me, so he agreed it was a great question. Um, so let's go, that's uh, model two. This is how you do an interaction. So this is how you do, you know, what's going to be one of your problems next week. Go ahead and name it. LM, linear model. Now we're going to type in Y, since we don't, what's his just name Y, is about X1 
plus x2 plus x1 times x2. So if one of these gets stronger as the other one gets stronger, we've got positive interaction. If one gets weaker as the other gets stronger, we've got a negative moderation. So um, So we can estimate that, and it didn't like, why did it not like why? Oh, I'll tell you why. Because I didn't tell it where to look for it. So I'm just going to copy this and redo it. Data equals my data, and my data 86 is the one that's active. So now, there we go. You can view this if you want, or we can just do summary. Model two. And here we go. You can see this interaction is positive. Um, this is still extremely positive here, but sometimes when you're testing an interaction, So these little things are just like any other chart, you know, if it's a thousand, you know, the 10,000th level, you know, the thousandth level, 100, or you know, the thousandth level here, P001 all the way down to 10. Uh, this became at the, at the point one level. So since these are probably two tails, you could, Call that 0 0.05 and report it as one tail um, if you wanted. But you see, some things become significant as you take some more of that variance out. And sometimes uh, from the other chart will be less significant. That's fine because the interaction is explaining. Once you find the interaction, these don't really matter. What you're looking for is one, is it significant? Sometimes it'll change and there's a negative interaction, see, negative. So as probably as X2 gets large or as X1 gets larger, the relationship between X2 and Y get weaker. That's what that means. Um, So another thing we're looking at, um, the change in R square, you want at least one or two percent to say, you know, it matters. So we got 0. 0.659 and 0. 0.738. That's point, that's 12 per, extra percent variant in this fictitious Y here, explained by and you know, we should, you know, you should be able to or look at the residuals, you know, if you want to go that deep. We'll get into that next week, but that's just kind of how you call up, how you type in simple commands, um, and how to use this browser version of R in case you need it. So I'm going to go back and walk through chapter two, three, and four examples just to give y'all practice if, for people that are way behind and then jump to seven and do those examples. Then I'll go back and do some homework and try to get those up by at least Friday. So if you're just lost, you can at least just kind of walk through um, the homework already solved. You'll have different numbers, different files, but you can just follow along and knock them out. So I know this was a little long. I rambled a little bit, but I'm trying to explain two different programs and why. And main thing for people that cannot or do not want to or do not have permissions on the computer they use to load packages like R, Here's a stand, you know, a browser version that you can use and should cost you at the most $30 if it costs you a nickel at all. So um, other than that, I'm going to try to leave here and try to see if I can't upload this to y'all, you know, as quickly as possible. Then, then I'll start working on the others. So good night. I will see y'all. Um,
Go ahead and stop the share. Hope this has helped some of y'all get started. Uh, and uh, see y'all the next one.